when like they call the meeting to order. I know uh, Mr. Ottman is normally the one who does that for us. Uh, yes. Dr. Dr. Mitchell asked if I could help, but if you want to do it, you can do it as well. Uh, no, I, I, little bit, please, Mr. Rare. <laughs> so it's, uh, you're ready to call the meeting order? Um, oh, Eric, Eric, hang on one second. Uh, Gwen is saying that she's unable to unmute. <coughs> <coughs> Now I am able to. Sorry. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Thank you. I think you have to, we have to take the Pledge of Allegiance. Indeed. As the meeting's being called to order. Please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic, and republic for which it stands. Stand. One, one nation and under God, indivisible. Indiv with liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Ms. Morgan, you always do a great job at that, for the record. Thank you. That's my North Public School District. Absolutely. I'll see all the way, all throughout my life. It's a good thing. Now it's time to call the roll. Uh, I'm going to start with Mr. Richard Wyatt. Out here. Uh, Board Member Jacqueline Workman. Yes. Board Member Carmen Cedar Pyle. Yes. Board Member Emily Morgan. Here. Board Member Pat Hembry. Board Member Josely Castro. Here. Board Member John Campbell. Here. I see Richard's hand up. Okay, hold Raised on. Hand. Uh, I'll come back to him. Vice President Lynn Anderson person. Yes. Board President Eric Andrews. Present. Board Member Richard Wyatt. Present. Okay. You have a quorum. You may proceed. Board President. So uh, I won't uh, belabor the point we're here tonight and thank all the community members who joined us and see we have a, a number on so far. Thank you, Ms. Thornton, who's also with us from New Jersey School Board Association, um, who's here to present a presentation to us for us to learn a little bit more about the strategic plan process. Uh, without belaboring the point and, and taking up anyone's time, I'll gladly submit the floor to you, Ms. Thornton. Thank you very much. Thank you to the board. It's good to see you all again. Um, and I hope that you all are well. I'm not going to take um, a great deal of your time speaking about anything except strategic planning. Um, so I'm going to share my screen um, and begin um, talking about exactly what that process looks like. Can you, you can't see it yet. Yes. Can you? See? Yes, we can see it. Okay. I don't know why I can't see it. Cannot see my own screen. So let me stop sharing and reshare. Give me a moment, please. I'm sorry. I apologize. Now I can see it. Can you see it? <laughs> Good. All right. Well, well, yes. um, and welcome to your community members who may be on to any staff and faculty. Um, thank you to the board for this opportunity to talk about strategic planning. Um, I think this is a wonderful time to really begin thinking about it. We're just coming through what was been, what has been an extraordinary year and a half of unex, unanticipated change. Um, and so I think talking about strategic planning um, as we think about the fall in September of 2021 um, would be a wonderful idea for your board. And really it is about a process um, and it's about being able to um, talk about what the advantages of strategic planning are, um, how your community members, your staff, the board can be part of that process. And then I'd be happy to answer any questions that you as the board members have and perhaps um, your community members, if they can put it in the chat um, or however you take public comment, I would be happy to answer their questions as well. And really strategic planning is about creating a 
educational wide vision um, that will direct, motivate, and inspire all members of the educational community to work together effectively. Excuse it's me. about. I'm so sorry, and I'm so sorry to cut you off. You were definitely in the in the in the midst of it, but there's something very important I forgot to do, so I apologize. Okay. You just give me one second. I, I should have, and I forgot. It. Thank you uh, for Ms. Acosta for reminding me that I should have done the translation. Um, I know, and I just want to give an opportunity. I'm so sorry about that, Mr. And I. No Please. problem at all. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so again, I'm sorry again to the public for interrupting that for cutting into that time. But I do want to make sure that I recognize all members of our public. I do want to make sure that they have an opportunity and know the process procedure for responding and participating. And even more so when you said um, community members should have a point of just flag that I didn't do that. So if you don't okay. you just forgive me, I just want to just take one brief moment again to uh, make sure that I allow Mrs. Acosta uh, the opportunity just to translate for us and let um, that, that portion of the public know how they can respond and participate in this opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Andrews. Um, I wanted to uh, share real quick, just so that everybody knows where to change uh, once the facilitator gives me the right. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, you need me to stop, stop sharing? Yes. Yes, please. Here we go. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No problem. All right. Now let me share. My screen. Okay. Perfect. Right. Buenas noches, me, buenas noches uh, o buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a la, re, la reunión de los miembros de la Junta de las Escuelas Públicas de Plainfield. Esta reunión de esta noche es una reunión especial. Si nos está escuchando de una computadora, por favor, eh, presione a el, el símbolo que aparece en un mundo, dice interpretación y entonces seleccione español. Si nos está escuchando de un dispositivo o celular, por favor, Presione los tres botoncitos que dicen más o more y esto, los, los botoncitos están en la parte de abajo de su celular o dispositivo, iPad o cualquier tipo de dispositivo que no sea computadora y presione entonces la, eh, language, language interpretation o el lenguaje de interpretación y después va, verá el idioma preferido que es español. Estaremos aquí la noche entera para hacer, re, darle más información acerca de la presentación que nos van a presentar esta noche. Muchas gracias. Aquí estaremos. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And again, I apologize. Just that. No problem whatsoever. I'm thank you because that means everyone can understand. That's our goal here. So I will go back to um, where we left off. Um, and that's really, I, I was beginning to talk about um, strategic planning and its importance in terms of developing a community wide shared vision for where you want the school district to go over the course of the next three to five years. Because strategic planning is about creating a plan that will move the district forward over the course of the next three to five years. And it's particularly important as we emerge from this time that has been so unique and extraordinarily unusual, um, where students have been remote, faculty have been remote, learning has looked differently. Um, it has created a lot of, um, discontinuity for kids, for families. And so really developing a plan over the course of the next five, three to five years will ensure the district um, really is able to move forward effectively. So in order to do that, strategic planning really answers three big questions. If you're going to talk about where you want to be, you have to know where we are now. You have to talk about where do we want to be? What are, what would we, in a perfect world want Plainfield schools to be able to accomplish over the course of the next three to five years. What will it look like? How will education be being delivered? What specifically um, will be the focus of that education? What kind of facilities? What kind of um, co-curricular opportunities do you want your students to have access to? And then if we're going to get there, how are we going to get there? 
Um, a goal without a plan is nothing more than a wish. And so it becomes critically important to develop specific goals and objectives to move the district closer to that vision that you as a community um, of the board, the parents, the staff, the administration um, develop and share together. And here is my friend Yogi Berra, which you may all remember, um, who is famous for saying, if you don't know where you're going, you might end up someplace else. <laughs> it really does speak to the importance of needing to um, collectively decide where you want to go so that you don't end up someplace else where you don't want to be, okay? Um, what are the advantages of strategic planning? Because clearly there is a cost involved of time and resources of the board, the community members, your staff, um, the administration, your teachers in being involved in this process. Um, but really there are a lot of advantages. It is a proactive way of addressing the future, thinking about where you are now. Um, it really optimizes the use of limited resources. We know that we have um, financial constraints in every school district. There's not unlimited resources. Um, it provides for an ongoing planning cycle where you can plan, execute, evaluate, and then begin again. It increases communication among and between all stakeholder groups, between the board and the administration, between the community and the school district. Um, it allows for a forum for your community to actively participate in determining the future direction of the district. So it's proactive, it's creative, it's an innovative way of getting the best ideas that you can generate from all of those various groups and perspectives that are out there that have a vested interest. Um, strategic planning should in involve a cross section of your community that includes all stakeholder groups um, including people such as your police chief, your firemen, um, senior citizens, preschool parents, um, parents of students currently in school, your teachers, because it will impact what goes on in the classroom, um, your administrators, because it will impact what takes place in their school buildings. So it really does involve um, the entire community as a whole. Um, the more community participation you have from various stakeholder groups, including other governmental um, entities such as your town council, um, as well as other NGOs from the activities and organizations within your community that are active with your youth um, are critically important in its success. So um, it really does create this ongoing cycle of planning, assessment and decision making. So it provides um, an opportunity to optimize what are limited resources um, through the development of this plan. It increases communication, again, among and between all stakeholders. Um, and it's something that really will help your district moving forward. It puts a clear focus on decision-making. It highlights the importance of having thorough and good information for your decision-making. And it really should inspire um, more collaboration and working together as a community um, moving forward, because all of you are interested in the best for all of the students of Plainfield. So why plan? Um, your school enrollment may be changing. Um, and I know that there were lots of districts who lost students through the pandemic in terms of um, going to other school districts, private schools, um, the makeup of your school population may be changing. Um, there may be more people in your community now who don't have children in school. In New Jersey, um, in most communities, it's only around, around approximately 20% of the population in your municipality have students that are actually in the school system. So there are lots of stakeholders out there who are taxpayers um, who are helping to support your school district and hearing from them and their voices is critically important as well. There may be changes in family structure within your community um, as, as a lot of folks, um, sometimes when they age out, New Jersey is not a wonderful place to retire in terms of its tax structure um, and affordability. So very often um, you may be having, seeing a shift in the demographics. We will have the outcomes, which is wonderful from this latest census that was due in 2020, but 
finally is being delivered in 2021. So we'll have up-to-date statistical information to use, which will be very helpful to the board as you look toward moving forward um, to make sure that you're prepared. Um, the economic structure of your community may have changed as a result of the pandemic. There were many small businesses that were struggling um, and the educational levels of your community may be changing as well. We do know that there is competition for your public schools within Plainfield, that there are charters um, that take dollars from the school district. Um, and that's something that I know is of concern for a lot of folks um, as you try to do more with less. So limited funding obviously has an impact on the programs and services and supports that you can provide. Um, we know that our kids are going to come back to school um, in September, fingers and toes crossed, um, hopefully on a full-time basis, but they will be bringing with them both the trauma um, and some likely social emotional learning needs um, in addition to perhaps a need for acceleration where there may be opportunity gaps that were created as a result of the pandemic. All of those are pieces that are going to have to be addressed. So developing a long-term plan and a set of strategies to address that um, is probably a very good idea for your district. So if you could answer yes to any of those questions, which I sort of answered for you and I apologize, um, but that is the reality that most school districts are facing, um, then strategic planning is something that really would be beneficial for you. Um, once you create those strategic planning goals that will come out of this activity, they will then be able to be used for your annual district goals for your Board of Education. Um, from those goals, your superintendent will be able to develop his or her merit goals. The goals will drive your administrative goals at all of the building levels. Um, those will filter down through the departments and to your staff. Um, and will help to determine their student growth objectives, their SGOs, as well as their professional growth objectives. They will also help to inform what kind of professional development is offered within the school district. All of those things together, working in collaboration and having your oars in the water rowing in the same direction, we know will lead to increased student achievement because it will be working toward that shared vision so while the district goals that you develop for your strategic plan will be long-term goals, you will pull from that st those strategic plans on an annual basis some of those specific objectives that will work toward completion of those strategic goals. And you will be working on them as a full school district. And so the implementation of each individual goal might look differently at the elementary level from the middle school level to the high school level, they will all be around the same goal, okay? This is really the components of a strategic plan. Um, the commitment um, that's up to side reflects the commitment on behalf of the community. And the commitment at the bottom really is the Board of Education and administration that is committed to it. It begins with the development of a state of the schools and a state of the community report. So again, in order to talk about where we want to go, we have to know where we are today. Um, from there, it would lead into development of a shared vision and then development of beliefs. What do we believe the role of the district is? What do we see as the role of parents in this, in guardians in this process? What do we believe quality education looks like? Um, from there, we will review your mission statement and either affirm it or develop a new mission statement um, to reflect um, perhaps the changing times. You would also develop very specific goals and then the strategies to reach those goals and action plans that will lay out um, how those goals will be met and who would be involved in those processes. Um, and so you will be left with a plan that you need to keep on your board table that should direct everything that the board does over the course of a year and should be uh, a guidepost right alongside your policy manual, right? Um, they work in coordination, your strategic plan and your policies to move the district forward. How can you participate in this process? Um, this is really important because there are lots of opportunities to participate. 
We recognize that people are busy and that you have multiple um, demands on your time as parents, as community members, as board members, professionally, personally. Um, so we have created a large number of opportunities for participation. We encourage people to participate as much as they can, um, but we do not expect everyone to be able to participate at the same level. But the greater number of folks that participate in the plan, the better your strategic plan will be because it will reflect the voices of all segments of your community and all voices need to be heard to ensure a quality strategic plan. So it generally takes around six to nine months. Um, it, it's much less um, painful than pregnancy. I can say that having given birth to four children um, and it's a whole lot more fun. So there you would begin with the formation of a state of the school committee and a state of the community committee. Um, that's important because the schools are an integral part of the community and the community is an integral part of the school district. So the state of the schools committee would look at what the current academic program looks like, what the activities look like, what does staffing look like, what do the co-curricular programs look like, what are the strengths of your district currently, what are the challenges that the school district is facing. Um, these committees are made up of volunteers of both staff and community members. Um, they work together to develop this report around the state of the schools. And the same thing is true for the state of the com community. Is, are your demographics changing? Is the, are the economic levels of residents going up, going down? Is the population going up, going down? Um, what does housing look like? What kind of opportunities are there in the communities for partnerships, um, for um, students to access internships, um, access resources, um, perhaps your park and recreations um, department, all of those kinds of pieces around your community are important to know. Um, and actually in many districts, oftentimes we have realtors who use the state of the community report um, to share with prospective buyers in communities who are looking at moving to a particular community because it's a wonderful way to look at um, what's going on in your town or your city and what's going on in the schools. Um, both reports are very helpful, but they provide a common basis of understanding for all of the participants in the strategic plan. In other words, it's a way of looking at where we are today this is what our schools look like. This is what we offer. Here's where we do well. Here's where we have challenges. Here's what we see as the challenges that may be coming down the road over the course of the next three to five years that we need to begin thinking about how are we going to address those in a logical, coherent way that will allow us to optimize all of our resources, whether you're talking about staffing, whether you're talking about curricular materials, whether you're talking about your facilities, whether you're talking about um, personnel. So all of those pieces are critically important. Those committee reports are shared ahead of a planning council conference, which is a weekend program. It's a Friday night um, from about 5.30 to 9. I'll show you sort of a walkthrough schedule and then an, a Saturday program. Um, it is an interactive opportunity to meet lots of folks from your community um, I will not be talking as long at any part of that, <clears throat> excuse me, Friday night or Saturday program as I'm speaking to you this evening. You will all be actively engaged in vision setting, in working on the mission, on developing goals, on developing objectives. You will be the ones actually doing the work together. Um, and we actually rotate you through a process so that um, not only will you be working with people you know, one of the intangible benefits of a strategic plan is you will get to meet and know other folks in your community that perhaps you don't ordinarily meet or interact with. Um, and hopefully there will be teachers from the elementary, middle, high school, um, as well as administrators, because it will impact what happens within your buildings. Um, and you need them as the touchstone with reality because they are in the uh, classrooms with your students on the day-to-day -day base. 
basis. They know what is doable. They know what the challenges are in a way, for example, that the Board of Education members and parents can't know because they're not there with their children. Um, we actually encourage students to participate in this process as well as community members because at the end of the day, they're your ultimate customer. They are the consumer of the product you provide, which is education. So they have a unique perspective to bring to this process. And it's important that they be included in this process. Okay. Um, so you can be involved in this process to the extent you are able. Um, if you want to just work on the state of the schools report, you have time to do that. You like to do that kind of work and research or the state of the community. Um, you could just work on that. If you want to just come to the planning council weekend because you think that's where all the action is, and it is, um, you could do that as well. Um, <clears throat> once we get through that planning council weekend, we will have committees that will work on developing action plans for each of the goals that comes out of the strategic plan. So if you're someone who really likes to write action plans and you're someone who's really um, good at doing that, and I always encourage staff to be a part of that as well. Um, you can work on one of the action plan committees after that strategic planning um, weekend happens. Once those action plans are written, we will bring back all the stakeholders again together um, to review the strategic planning outcomes, to verify that they reflect what happened over the weekend, that the action plans will move the district closer to achievement of those or achievement of those goals. And then we will put it all together and give it to you as a board for adoption as your strategic plan. Um, it's not the superintendent's plan. It's not the board's plan. It's your community's strategic plan, which is why it's so critically important to have and hear all of those voices because while you are charged with implementing that strategic plan, right? It is your community that you are working for in the community of the children of Plainfield, okay? Um, we suggest that you keep the strategic plan on the board table. Um, you don't want a strategic plan with spots and that's a strategic plan on the shelf. You know, if you're going to develop a strategic plan and throw it on the shelf and take it out once a year and then go, and blow the dust off of it, then there's no purpose in doing it. The purpose in asking your community to come out, volunteer, spend their time, and ask for their input is to make sure that we translate that input into action and that we move the district forward. Um, so it's always important, and I typically come back once a year um, to review and invite everyone who participated in any way, whether they volunteered for the weekend or worked on the state of the schools or state of the community, whether they worked on an action um, planning team to hear what is the progress that we have made. Um, sometimes there are emergent circumstances that happen in a, in a school district over the course of the year. Um, I used to use the example of Sandy when Hurricane Sandy came through. There were a lot of districts that had to rehome their kids, not so much in the central part of the state, but down in our southern counties by the beach and so forth that were out of their buildings. So their strategic planning goals sometimes had to go on hold for a year. Um, but what is a more perfect example than this past year and a half when we've had to deal with a pandemic, we're just getting kids um, online and working with their teachers and working on their education became the driving force to everything that districts were doing. And it became the 24 hour a day job um, for every administrator, every teacher in a district. So by coming back annually, we say, is this plan still good? Are the goals still relevant? Is there anything that we need to change? Is there anything we need to tweak or add if there are emergent circumstances that happen? Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen and we will continue to just move forward in a more normal environment um, as more and more folks are vaccinated and the pandemic continues to wane. Um, so I'm hopeful that that won't happen. So here is a description of the state of the schools community. Again, you look at what the areas of strength are, perhaps what the challenges are, what factors you have in existence that will help you with those challenges. 
and what are the hindering factors that you may have to deal with. Um, all of these two reports, the state of the school and the state of the community would get sent electronically to all the folks who volunteer to come for the strategic planning council weekend so that we level set. So we have a common basis of understanding of where we are. Um, and that's important because a lot of folks um, while you as board members, for example, may know a lot about how the district operates and functions and what you're doing and where you are, not everyone has that more global view. So we want to make sure that everyone that's participating um, has that same shared view uh, of what's going on. So it will look at your educational program, what resources you have, your facilities, your technology, um, school community relations, all of those are part of the state of the schools report. Um, both the state of the schools and the state of the community reports should be long enough to be thorough and complete, but not so long that when I send them, people look at them and go, I'm not reading that, it's too long. So you need to be concise um, and clear um, and thorough, but um, not overwhelm folks um, with minutia. So you want to make sure that you hit the highlights um, and keep it concise, okay? The state of the, the community committee, again, looks at the strengths of the community, um, what helping and hindering factors there may be that impact the school, um, looking at your demographics, your funding, your rateables, um, other community factors, the political environment within your community that may impact um, what happens within the school district, um, all of those pieces. Is your population growing? Is, it, is your population declining? All of those pieces impact, obviously, enrollment and impact funding for the school district. So those are the kinds of things that would be in the state of the community um, committee. Um, if you're interested in those things, um, you would be perfect for sitting on that. And again, those reports would be distributed prior to the planning weekend, which runs on a Friday night from 6 to about 9.30, and then on Saturday from 8.30 to 3.00. We always <clears throat> pick inclement weather and snow dates or hurricane dates or whatever you want to call them. Um, I know in a Zoom environment, we no longer have snow days, I guess. Um, but when we go back to, to regular schedules, um, that's something that we need to determine as well. Um, so how are we going to get there? Um, we're going to plan. We're going to develop goals. We're going to develop action plans so that when um, the weekend is done. The superintendent, the administrative team, teachers and volunteers will take those goals and strategies from the planning weekend and develop action plans. The action plans provide a step-by-step -step set of actionable items that will lead to the achievement of each of the goals that come out of the strategic plan. Um, typically, um, in strategic plans, there are multiple goals. There are some goals that have low cost and high impact. There are some goals that have a higher cost. So those may have to be phased in over the course of three to five years. You're not going to finish this and then implement everything in the plan in one year. It is meant to be a three to five year plan, which means that even if there is turnover on the board or turnover um, in staffing, that there will be consistency because there will be a plan in place and that plan will live beyond um, any individual's participation or existence within the district. And that's the beauty of it because it ends initiative churn. It ends, um, this is the latest greatest topic um, that we now need to address immediately because we have a plan. Um, and that plan provides a map for moving forward. Um, and it gives you that roadmap. It's like having GPS for the school district. In many ways, I like to think of it that way. It provides you direction and guidance so you can't get lost. And this is someone who could get, I could get lost easily in the state of New Jersey, um, absent my GPS. So I know how helpful having that kind of roadmap and guidance is. Um, and it's important, I can't stress enough, to have different perspective and voices. Um, I was telling um, a, a, another board member in another district, I did a strategic plan with a colleague and we will bring a team of folks in 
I always do strategic plans with at least one other field service rep who would be coming in with me um, for all of these meetings. We will come in and train the state of the schools community and the state of the community volunteers so they know what to do and how to move forward to write those reports. We will come in and do the weekend, obviously. Um, but I was doing a strategic plan with a colleague and I was waiting for the meeting to begin. It was in a beautiful school building and it was out in Hunterton County. So it, there were lots of woods and trees and it was an all purpose room of an elementary school. And it was an entire window of glass. And we were looking out over this window and it was really pretty. It was springtime like now. And I said, this is such a wonderful room for the kids to have lunch. It was their all purpose room. And the gentleman next to me said, ma'am, this room is my worst nightmare. I was a little taken aback and I said, I, I don't understand. He said, well, I'm the police chief. And you see that glass? There is nothing between a car and that glass. <laughs> there were no bollards up against the curb, right? So if somebody accidentally hit the gas instead of a brake, right? They could have come right into the school building with their car not on purpose, um, but it turns out he was the police chief. I was looking at it just from a different perspective. His perspective was completely different than my perspective, which is why it's so important to have different voices. I was, you know, and I'm a parent and a grandparent, so I do care deeply about children, um, but I wasn't just in that mode of thinking at that moment. And all I could see was, oh, this is so pretty. It's so sunny, it's warm, it's so lovely. There are flowers blooming, you can see the trees. And all this gentleman could see was the potential for disaster. Um, by the time we delivered the strategic plan, there were bollards out in front of that, <laughs> um, those windows, okay? So that a car couldn't drive through. But I tell you that story just to give you a sense of why it's so important um, to have different voices because we all have different perspectives and see different things in a different way, um, depending on where we've been and who we are and what we do, okay? So here's a sample of what an action plan form would look like. So your strategic planning goal would go in the top, the objective would go next, and then what major activities would have to take place in order to achieve that goal? Um, what staffing would be required? what kind of resources that could be staffing, it could be dollars, it could be professional development, and then specific timelines, by when will it be achieved? And then how will we as a community know that this has been achieved? So indicators of success, um, some people call it evidence, um, but how will we know that this goal has been reached? And how do we know that we've achieved success here? So there would be an action plan developed for each objective under each goal area. Um, and this is an important step. And there, that would be, again, done with teachers, administrators, and um, community members. Because again, keep in mind, everybody has a different perspective. But particularly important for the action plan writing is having staff involved because they know um, and work with children on a daily basis, okay? Um, so this particular process, and we have another one that is shorter that's called the 3D process, which is three meetings, involves many fewer people, um, is certainly not as thorough. Um, this is the matrix and it really lays out for you and I will send this to you so that you have it. Um, but we would really kick it off in the fall um, the fall is a wonderful time in September um, to talk it up among your community members at your back to school nights um, where you have a lot of parents in attendance. We have a volunteer form that could be distributed and returned right to the school from there. You can put the volunteer form up on your website. Um, and then I generally ask that um, the district create a steering committee um, of individuals so that we can make sure that we have um, enough volunteers for all aspects of this and that we have um, a, a wide variety of folks involved in each of the separate groups that will be working together. Um, and I don't know the folks in your community, but, 
but your staff and the board do know the folks in your community. So we want to make sure that we have a good cross section. Um, and again, I didn't include, but your faith based organizations, you know, absolutely have to be included as well. Um, all the various groups in town, if you have uh, a small business association or a rotary club, um, you want to make sure that the teachers association is well represented. You want to make sure that your administrative bargaining unit, all those folks who are involved in the educational process or in your community um, need to be a part of this for it to be successful. So questions that I can answer for you because I know I've gone through a lot of information um, rather quickly, but I know that um, it is something that you about, we have talked about on and off for several years as I've worked with the board through various um, years. Um, but it really is a way to make optimal use of your time, your resources, all of the talents of all of your staff and administrators that you have in the district. Um, and they will appreciate it because then they know what the expectations are and what you will be focusing on. And it makes your annual board life easier because your district goals get pulled directly from the strategic planning goals. So it makes that easier. And again, it means that there's a plan in place, a roadmap um, that will run for three to five years that will um, cross over the life of any year of a board's life and cross over any staffing changes that may occur or changes in the community. And we come back annually and do, I call it my Ed Koch, how am I doing? Um, for those of you who remember that that mayor in New York who used to run around New York saying, how am I doing? Um, we come back every year and say, how did we do? What did we accomplish? What's still out there? Is this still valid? Do, are there things we need to add? Are there things we need to delete? And that's an important piece as well, because you want it to be a living document that has life um, and that continues to move the district forward. So I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, um, Mr. And I, th I think there are a few. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Allow a few people in. Uh, can I ask you a quick question? I know I heard you mention a few times that um, you had done the, this process before, but I was wondering um, in what districts you might have done them in, done them in, and are there any that are publicly available? Uh, we could take a look. They're available online. Um, we have done them in districts all across the state. Um, I've done them. I'm trying to think. I've done them in Scotch Plains, Fanwood. Um, I've done them for the last three strategic plans. So that runs close to um, nine to 12 years. I've been doing them religiously there. Um, also in Union County, I'm doing, I'm going to start this planning process with Roselle. Um, they're going to be doing it. I've done it there in the past. Um, I have done it in a, in a lot of different districts. I can send you a list of the districts where I have done them, I off the top of my head. Um, I, no, no, that's fine, I, and I just wanted to, you know, just take a look at it. I thought it would be, um, you know, a good res resource material just to see how they've been constructed. So thank you. And most all of the districts that we do, and we urge you to always put up your strategic plan online so that they can see, including the action plans. And we think it's very helpful not only to put up the action plans, but to fill them out uh, on a regular basis so that as the action, as the steps are completed, your community can see the progress that's actually being made in real time, if that makes any sense. I mean, there might be some slight lag by the, when putting it up, but by putting those action plans up there and filling them in as you go along through the course of a year means at the end of the year, your public as well as the board will be able to say, wow, this is what we accomplished. So it really does provide, um, again, a wonderful roadmap that is visible. Um, it helps with communication and collaboration with your community by doing it in that fashion um, so that they can actually see. We would, again, recommend strongly that you put up the state of the schools and the state of the community report on your website as well. So your public can read and see those pieces. So everything that is an outcome 
um, and you would get um, as a board an executive summary of everything that took place as well as two notebooks that include all of the action plans. The executive summary would not, that you would receive as a board member wouldn't have the action plans, but you will have a notebook as a board member um, to keep on the board table and your administration would have one as well with all of the action plans, as well as that executive summary. And again, we recommend you post the executive summary so that again, your community, those folks who couldn't participate perhaps, or participated in only one part of the process, <coughs> excuse me, can see the totality of the work that was done. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, hi, Gwen. Hi, Carmesita. Hi, Carmesita. <laughs> If we don't need this uh, share screen, can we take it off, please? Oh, yes, we can. I'm so right. sorry. That's OK. Thank you. I'd much rather look at you all than look yeah, at that. Yeah, I like looking at you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have no question. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. Are there any other questions, concerns? I'm thinking we're looking into the chat to see if there's any. OK. Public. As well as. There are any I see, that, I see Catherine Bolter's hand up. Yes. Mr. Gore, we can admit those individuals. Well, are you moving to public comment now? You know what? That, that would be the appropriate time to do it. So, Mrs. Thorne, you're going to stay on with us for a little bit, right? I will, sir. Absolutely. Again, if no other board members have any more questions or concerns, I'm going to open up the floor for public comment. All right, so Mr. Gore, please, uh, can you allow in? Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Rivera, there's a process for the public comment, right? Do we have to do that? Yes. Now? Not necessarily. Well, I, I, there's a statement to be read that's on the agenda regarding public comment. Thank you. Um, and it's just pretty simple. Members of the public may comment on agenda items. Members may speak once at the end of committee reports, which isn't applicable today. Uh, so you may begin public comment. So Ms. Balsh, you have the floor. Hello. Hey. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello. So in, I would like to um, ask a question of Ms. Thornton, if I may. And thank you, um, board, for um, beginning this process of strategic planning. I think it's a really important process. And thank you, Ms. Thornton, for that um, wonderful presentation. Uh, my question is this, um, as I understand it, action plans will be um, assessed, the, um, the progress of the action plans will be um, assessed. And who does that assessment? Do the, individual, do the individuals who are involved in each action plan assess themselves? Or is the progress um, uh, judged according to some outside group, like, I don't know, district administrators or somebody? Well, typically the um, indicators or evidence, right, of accomplishment are put in and they're generally very objective measurements, right? So that they're generally entered by um, who's ever responsible for a particular goal, whoever is charged with that responsibility, typically it would be an administrator, but there would be staff that would be involved, there would be um, it depends on what goal area it was, but let's say it's a curriculum and instructional um, goal around um, student achievement. So it would be entered by um, those people responsible for implementation of the curriculum, by teachers, by supervisors. And as they complete the steps, they would indicate um, and there would be measures of what those indicators were. It might be if it was professional development, it might be copies of agendas from the meetings where the professional development took place. So there would be ways for you to know as a community member, here's what happened and here's, here's the evidence. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Do you have any more questions? That was it. So we'll see next up is, uh, this is Durham. I see her hand is raised in the chat. This is Durham. You have the floor. Dr. Durham. Sorry. Chair, 
She's muted. Yes. Good evening. I also would like to congratulate the board on moving in this direction. I think it's quite admirable and very, very necessary. My question is, is a little connected to the previous one, which has to do with um, when the assessment is made as to whether or not uh, the uh, achievement has been made at the end of the year. Is there not a chance for benchmarks during the course of the year so that we can be sure we're moving in the right direction with whatever goal we're an objective that we have? Absolutely, there would have to be benchmarks for each goal and for each objective, there would be benchmarks so that you would be able to measure as you move through the year if progress is being made. So it's not just about waiting until the end of the year to do that, which, which is why we suggest that the action plans be posted and as the steps are taken and accomplished, that's entered in a timely way so that the public um, as well as staff, as well as community members um, and anyone who's looking, who's interested, will be able to see. And then we come back and do that annual, how do we do? Um, but you will be able to see that as a member of the public over the course of a year. Does that answer your question? It does, but I would ask this, <clears throat> if indeed, at benchmark one, whatever time that would be, we see that things are not going in the direction that we desire. Is there a chance to make some adjustment? And who Absolutely. would do that? Absolutely. I would imagine it would be the Board of Education that would help to monitor that appropriately because their role is to provide oversight and monitoring to what goes on in the school district. So if something is not making progress or um, if a benchmark is missed, and there may be a, a absolute reasonable explanation for missing a benchmark for whatever set of reasons occur, because that happens occasionally, um, that ought to be made public and explained so that everyone, again, stays on the same page. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. See, Mrs. Uh, Chase has, has her hand up and is waiting for us. Ms. Chase, you have the floor. Uh, just so you know, you're muted. Chase, you have the floor. There we go. Ms. Chase, just so you know, your, your, your mic is still muted. You uh, you do have the floor, though. Mr. Gordon, perhaps you can assist. Maybe turn it, uh, unmute her mic if necessary. I've asked her to unmute a few times. I don't know if she's just not clicking the button or not, uh, or it's not popping up on her screen. Okay. I'll try to just give her one minute long. I know I experienced plenty of technical difficulties at my time, so I'll try to give <laughs> a chance. You know, though, though while I have you, uh, just this brief minute of time, Mr. Gordon, how much the cost usually associated with uh, strategic planning? Is there a cost associated with it? Let me actually there is, um, and I the matrix is in the PowerPoint that I will send to you as soon as I um, get off this so that you can post it. Um, so, I mean, so all the board members will have the PowerPoint as well as you'll be able to post it um, on your website if you would like to do so. Thank you. I had spoken to Dr. Mitchell about doing it, um, sending it to you right away. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh no, we lost Ms. Chase. Uh, I don't, searching again through attendees, I don't see any more hands raised. Um, 
I will we'll close public comment. I do see a few board members maybe have some follow up questions. Ms. Thornton, if you'd be kind enough to say, I give them Absolutely. That. Um, so, with that said, I guess we will. Uh, yes, let's just see somebody pop back up. Let me give them another opportunity. Somebody has their hand raised us and the participants. Let me see who it is. Um, all right. Miss Angie, uh, Miss, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Keisha Gay, you have the floor. Yeah, I just have a question. How are we going to go about finding volunteers? Like, what are we going to do? Because I know we do a lot of surveys and sometimes, uh, most of the time does, that does not work. So how we plan on making sure that we get different part of the communities and all community stakeholders involved this, for this process? Um, I, I strongly recommend um, that you the and I have would say this to the board that one of their responsibilities in this is to reach out to various community groups. They all have different constituencies that they know perhaps and are comfortable with. Um, also, we have um, letters that can come from the board president or from the superintendent that we already have done that you can customize. Um, sometimes people like to be invited personally, particularly. Um, some of the leaders of some of the various groups um, that exist within town to make sure that you get a good cross section. Um, you may attend different churches or mosques or synagogues. Um, and again, reaching out to your ministerium and to the faith community and inviting folks from those groups as well. Um, and then from your PTOs, your homeschool associations, um, advertising it and, and talking about it um, in the various buildings at back to school night to encourage parents. Um, if you have friends and neighbors who have preschoolers who are not yet in school, or if you um, know that there are, and, and you may have access to the senior community centers, again, a wonderful place to go out and to talk about this process and invite them in as well, because they are an invaluable asset and resource to the school district. Um, so I know that it is tough to get volunteers, um, but it is worthwhile and we would encourage you to reach out to your neighbors and friends. Um, and when people start talking about it to one another and get excited about the process, because it is exciting, it is also fun. I guarantee you that you will have a good time at the weekend. Um, again, I will be not be speaking to you as long as I have spoken this evening. Um, our goal is to have you talk to one another uh, among and between yourselves and to develop um, all of the kinds of outcomes that you need to have an, a living, breathing strategic plan. Does that answer your question? I know surveys have been used a lot this year because of the pandemic. Um, because it's been a wonderful way to try to reach um, your communities and the parents. Um, but this is more of an in-person um, type of activity where you really do need um, people to come in and volunteer their time, even if it's only a couple hours and they can only participate in one part of it. Um, I recognize that people are busy, I really do. Um, and it's a lot to ask. Um, but what is more important than the education of the children over the course? I mean, they are our future. We are educating folks for jobs that don't even yet exist. So thinking about what education is going to look like, who would have thought in February of 2020 that in March we would do a complete pivot? Um, education has traditionally been more um, slower. It's sort of like steering a large battleship to make change. They move very slowly. Um, overnight, districts pivoted from one form of educating children. We did a 360 degree turn and we did it um, quickly and effectively. Um, so we have that potential. Um, there are lessons to be learned from the pandemic, 
Um, and that's one of the pieces around strategic planning. What did we learn this past year in reflecting? What did we learn? What went well? What do we want to keep and hang on to? And how do we take that and, and um, leverage it for the, the future of education of our children? Um, that technology may enable kids to be able to accelerate their learning, to be able to take college and university courses while they're still in high school without ever leaving um, the comforts of their home in Plainfield. And I'm not suggesting technology replaces the classroom at all, but it allows for personalization. It allows for extensions of education. It allows you as a district perhaps to offer courses that you couldn't offer currently because your enrollment can't sustain it or you don't have a, a staff member perhaps that speaks Mandarin Chinese. And maybe you have kids who would like to learn um, Chinese um, or another world language. So there are all kinds of opportunities. Um, and when you start brainstorming as a community and thinking about those things together, um, you will be wowed by what you come up with um, in every area of educational life for your kids. Because it's all out there and having a plan will just ensure that you're able to leverage the things that we've learned and the money that you've spent on that technology and make sure that it's effectively used moving forward while at the same time providing that kind of one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with students and teachers that's so critical to student success. Because we know that education is about relationships and students learn better when they're in the classroom with a teacher that they love and trust. So I'm not for one moment suggesting a replacement of that. Well, there are lots of things that we have learned out of this and it was awful, but we have to take the good parts and leverage those to move ourselves forward. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I do see there are a few other hands in the chat. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bracco, you have the floor. Uh, thank you to the board and for everyone for the participation in this meeting. Um, my question for you is, um, is where can I find a summary of the meeting and a recording of the meeting that took place today? Um, the meeting, I believe, will be posted on your website. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I will be sending the PowerPoint from tonight, which is, incorporates everything that I've talked about. Um, and I'm hoping that the district, I'm sure they will, post it as part of the minutes to this meeting. So that will be available as well. And if I've misspoken, Mr. Andrews, please tell me, but I think that that's correct. Yeah, and all of that will happen in that fashion. Yes. yes, Dr. Mitchell, did you want to comment on that? I think it's you hit it right, the nail on the head. So. Okay. I'll probably put it up on YouTube. So um, just check back tomorrow. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fleming, you have the floor. Hi, yes, well, I wanted to say congratulations to the board. I think this is fantastic. We've been waiting a long time for this strategic plan and this is great. My question is, would you happen to have examples of strategic plans along with data that would support how schools have, school districts have been able to move in the right direction? That's a great tool to, uh, to get people interested and to really get volunteers on board because people want to really be a part of a project that is working that has data that supports that. Yes, Thank and you. we do, I do have samples. Um, unfortunately, they're from, um, they're, they're not in electronic form. <laughs> they're sitting um, in my office. Um, there are districts that have their strategic plans up um, and I will send the board a list um, of those districts that have done the strategic plans that you can go and look at their websites where those plans are up so that you can look at their data um, and see what they have accomplished. That would be great, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you. If there are no more questions from our public, I want to seek to close a public comment. I was hoping 
uh, that we might get Miss Chase back. I'm just trying to see. She's here. Uh, so we're going to close public comment. I don't see any more questions or hands that are raised at this point. Um, I do know just before we uh, kind of follow up and adjourn that, that there were some board members. I saw uh, Mrs. Anderson person particularly a hand went up. So I just uh, give you an opportunity to uh, make a comment or ask Mrs. Thorne any questions or comments you have. Sure, no problem. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Thornton, thank you so much. This was a great presentation. Um, and so one of my questions was, you were talking about uh, starting this in the fall. You had given two different options to us. One was doing one that would be a little bit, little bit longer. And then there was a short version. Um, when do boards opt to do one over the other? Um, sometimes because they have difficulty getting enough volunteers to do the longer version of the plan mm -hmm. than the state of the schools and state of the community. In the abbreviated plan, your administration would put together that report, the state of the schools and state of the community. There mm -hmm. would be three meetings um, that last about two hours, an hour and a half to two hours each mm -hmm. over the of three months. Um, you will come out with a, a vision statement. You will come out with goals. Um, but then the action plans are written um, by your administration as opposed to having um, broad groups of volunteers write those. And that's really the primary difference. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, smaller districts that have fewer, um, smaller communities to mm -hmm. do those abbreviated forms, mm -hmm. um, they were able to be done, I will tell you, during the pandemic because we could do those remotely very pretty easily, mm -hmm. um, Zoom with breakout rooms. Um, but doing um, the longer version of the plan because it is so um, extensive is mm -hmm. almost impossible to do remotely. And most of those plans were put on hold until September in districts that were going to begin them or had even started them. Mm -hmm. They were because of the pandemic and decided to wait until fall to sort of finish them up um, because of the need to have people in person. And because, you know, one, again, one of the benefits of all of these things is the ability to interact with other members of your community and to learn mm -hmm. one another, to brainstorm, um, to bring with, to the table your different perspectives and viewpoints so that all segments of your community are heard from. Mm -hmm. And a really important piece. Okay. And um, just a, another question. You were talking about starting in the fall, September. So would we have to start anything in August? Like what, what would be like step one to that? Really we... Developing a steering committee, setting up a calendar so we can okay. get dates on the, on the calendar. So we don't want to compete with anything that's going on in the school district. You know, mm -hmm. you want to do the strategic planning weekend on Friday night of homecoming, <laughs> you know, with the big football game on Saturday um, or any, you know, kind of concert or things that are going on in the district. You don't want to compete against those activities because you want people to, to come and participate. Mm -hmm. um, setting those things up so people can calendar those dates and schedule themselves and plan on participating. Um, that's another way to ensure success. You know, that you do it far enough in advance so that people can see the calendar, know when it's going to happen, and plan on participating. You know, we try to avoid the holidays. You know, you don't want doing it Thanksgiving weekend. No one's going to come. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. want to get too close to uh, the winter break because again, people, you know, have have the holidays and, you know, especially after this past year where it was sort of so limited in what people could do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this year everybody will be traveling to see family. And so you want to make sure that you're avoiding any kinds of, you know, school breaks or days off or those kinds of things and not compete. So it would really be putting together that volunteer form and a calendar um, in August so that you'd be ready to kick off with the beginning of school um, so that it could be shared at back to school nights at all of the school buildings, um, mm -hmm. be talked about from the board table. It can be on your website. It can be on Facebook. It can be on Twitter. Um, so that again, you are fostering um, some public interest in participating in this. And I understand, um, as I recall, 
Um, you all just celebrated your centennial, yes? 150th anniversary of the city. Okay, I'm sorry, I cut off 50 years there. I was, That's born, what I, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that to my town because I'm beyond that 50 years. So mm -hmm. just too long before me, but um, I was born in Plainfield more than 50 years ago, but I know you just celebrated as a city um, that event. And so, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of enthusiasm for that. And so, you know, getting some of those folks who maybe are familiar with the history of Plainfield and involving them in the state of the community report would be a wonderful piece um, mm -hmm. because they know how you got to where you are today um, because they've been here over time and they've been to your community. So, you know, having that historical perspective is important as well. Now, Gwen, thank you for that. Um, and then I'll let another board member go. Um, Gwen, you're our field service representative for the Board of Education. So uh, you're giving us this presentation for strategic plan. Um, as our representative, are there other options that boards will typically take or besides working with New Jersey School Board? Is there another sure, option? There, there, there are other consultants out there that will do strategic planning. Um, again, you know, um, they're typically um, much more expensive um, in their costs um, and they generally use roughly the same kind of process that we do. Um, strategic planning is pretty much strategic planning, whether it's in business or in education, you know, the various component pieces. Um, you may have worked for a firm, some of you, that have done strategic plan for your, their businesses um, and, and strategic planning looks a little bit different in business and industry, but not terribly. Again, it's to provide a roadmap for where your company is, where it's going and how we're going to get from where we are to where we are. Um, so there are other consultants that do it. And that's something, you know, if the board wants to explore, you certainly um, can take advantage of that. I think the only, um, the unique difference is that I have worked in your community for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I'm your community. I'm going to continue to be your field rep, regardless of how you do it. I think you should do strategic planning. I think it's that important um, that you do it and that it gets done because all districts should really have a roadmap. I, there's one county in the state where the executive county superintendent has made it virtually a requirement for every district to have a strategic plan. <laughs> yeah. He is so committed to making sure that people are making optimal of their resources and planning and looking forward, um, you know, not looking back, but looking mm -hmm. forward and, and thinking about what the future holds. And I know a lot of us this year have just been concerned about just getting through um, the year and sort of um, marching in place, as it were, um, mm -hmm. for a number of months. And, and for that, um, I understand, but it is really time that we all begin to think about what does the future really hold and look like for our kids because they're kind of to do that. Thank you. I have another question, but I'll wait to see somebody else ask a question. Okay. Uh, uh, so you're here. Yes. Uh, how you going again? Hey, um, Carmesita. On one of your slides, I saw that it said, like you had a long checklist and that was 6,000 and then another short list was 4,000. That's just an approximate amount of- No, that's the exact cost. So it's, the long one would be 6,000 and the short one would be four. Correct. Okay. Great. Absolutely. Thank you. It's just very hard to read on a slide at this distance. And I don't wear my glasses when I present. I'm Beth Bain. Oh, I saw it. There you go. <laughs> I knew you are, I knew you would. Dr. Mitchell has her hand up. Hi, um, clarification. Uh, board chair. Uh, clarification. Uh, did I hear you say that we had to bid on this process? No, you do not. It's a professional service. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Andy, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss. Sorry. Glad to meet you. You have a follow up. A follow -up. Okay. No, no, she can go. I'm fine. Okay. 
so uh, just, you know, not just for myself, but for the rest of the audience that's listening and understanding Jersey School Board and your cost, because you're saying now the, the longer version that takes several months is 6,000, the shorter 3D, 3D version is four. How does that compare on average, if you know, with consultants um, doing strategic plans for district? Is there an average cost? I'm just trying to, you know, give, give the audience an understanding of what the difference would be. There are some consultants, depending upon their level and what they do, it's $20,000 or more and up. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, actually, uh, it was $6,500 for the standard. What is 3D? Because it said 3D. 3D, we, we generally call that um, destiny determination and by design. Oh, okay. It's just an acronym. Oh, okay. Three meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and I would tell you that if I were doing that this year, that I would call it reflection, reimagining, and recalibrating. Mm -hmm. think that that's what we really need to be thinking about. Like that. Reflecting on what is and what has passed, reimagining what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. and how we're going to get from here to there. Okay. Oh, Ms. Castro, did I see your hand? Right, yeah, Ms. Castro. Good evening. Um, good evening, Gwen. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, when you were going through it, I, you know, I did a quick SWOT analysis in my head, and I do believe. Um, every reason that a district would need a strategic plan, we qualify for. Um, also, at the same time, I saw a lot of what can make a school district success successful. We are putting in place and we have been putting in place. I know we've, we've approved a lot of professional development. I know we have um, a lot of after school programs in place. We're also partnering with a lot of colleges. So we're doing a lot of great things. But I think one of our issues is kind of connecting that with data and merits, like, you know, just like creating like an overall report with all of the dots connected. And my question to you, I have too, is will you help us put, connect those dots? Because that's kind of the issue we face today. And I think a lot of board members have the same consensus that sometimes it's really hard to get the data that we're looking for. We may not be asking it correctly. I don't know, but I'm just hoping um, to know if your services will kind of help tie those, um, those loose ends. And secondly, how many volunteers roughly are we looking for from the community? For the weekend, you probably need around 40 to 35 to 40 folks to volunteer for that weekend, for that Friday night and Saturday. Um, for the state of the school, state of the community, you probably need seven to 10 people for each of those. And then for your action plan teams to write those action plans, again, five to seven people for each of those teams so that you have various perspectives. And yes, that's, that's the whole point is, is trying to figure out, for example, um, if there's a goal, what kind of data do you need to have to know that you've reached that goal? What are the specific benchmarks that you need to have? And one of the, one of the pluses that comes out of this is that while you know that there are a lot of um, perhaps partnerships with colleges and universities um, and that there are a lot of good things going on, not all members of your community may be aware of those things. Um, so one of the pieces, again, um, that's beneficial that comes out of this is just people talking to each other this weekend and saying, well, you know what, that's something we already do. We have a partnership with Union County College and this is what we do. We're working with TCNJ or we're working with NJIT. And these are the kinds of things that are offered to our students that we have available to them. These are programs that are in place that people may not even know um, that those are things that are going on within your school district. So those communications are just as important and an intangible kind of benefit um, that comes from the type of process. It's just that exchange between um, people that, again, you might not ordinarily interact with. You might be an elementary school parent and have a perception around the middle school, but you, you've never known really anything about the middle school and you might be able in a group with people from 
um, the middle school and you will find out lots of information that's beneficial to know what that program looks like. And you may have only heard about it tangentially at the bus stop or dropping your child off or picking them up. And so there are all kinds of pieces that come out of this um, that are not quantifiable data points, but are equally as important. Um, and that's around communication. Have I answered your question? Okay. Great, Thera. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions from board members? Ms. Anderson, person, I thought I saw your hand up again. Ms. Morgan, Mr. Campbell. I know we've lost Mr. White. Do you guys have any other questions? Concerns? I don't want Mine was just a thank you. Um, again, long overdue. I'm super excited about this process. I know it's something that board members have been talking about. Uh, for quite some time as well as the public so i'm happy to see um people on the call this evening so they got a chance to get the overview um and then we can start to you know get started so thank you thank you again you're welcome you. my pleasure all right thank you so much again i, I do want to you're welcome i see mrs morgan she does have a hand up i want to give her opportunity yes when where are we Hi, it's great to see you. Good to see you. Yes. The data, where would be a, a great source for data, especially if we're looking at the um, student outcomes? Well, that's, it depends on what kind of outcomes you're looking for, because mm -hmm. kinds of different pieces of data that you can look at that speak to outcomes. Um, it is a little more difficult this year because and last year, there was the elimination of the New Jersey Student Learning Standards Assessments. Mm -hmm. They postponed, but I'm sure that you are using in your classrooms either Linkit or um, Survey Island, or there's individual classrooms that are doing uh, assessments on a regular basis to measure what students have learned um, and perhaps where there may be um, gaps that opportunity gaps um, that that need filled. Um, and hopefully there will be opportunities for students to have that happen. Um, but you know, there's not only quantifiable data, but there's qualitative data to look at. So you know, there are all different kinds of things that sometimes board members don't think about. But if you look at student attendance rates, if you look at faculty attendance rates, if you look at your HIV numbers, if you look at your suspension and expulsion reports, if you look at the um, percentage of students participating in co-curricular activities. All of those are measures of, of school culture and climate. Mm -hmm. um, those are all different kinds of data points that you can look at as, a, as parents and as board members um, to think about, you know, what does our school culture and climate look like? What do those numbers say about where we are? And then what is it we need to do um, to engage students more fully to make sure there are more children um, engaged in co-curricular opportunities that will, um, whether they're STEAM or STEM activities, whether they're maker spaces, you know, all of those kinds of things that are going to prepare students for 21st century um, life and careers that I'm sure I haven't even any knowledge of yet because they haven't really even happened. Um, you know, there's all kinds of data around the fact that, you know, while my generation tend tended to stay um, in their profession for a number of years. Um, today's graduates will have five or six jobs by the time they hit retirement age. And they may not all be in the same area of, of um, enterprise or expertise. Um, you know, teachers today, for example, um, move much more between school districts than they did. When I started teaching, teachers tended to start in a school district and retire from the same school district. Now teachers are willing to move between school districts for any number of reasons, but that wasn't the case when I began teaching. Um, so things change and evolve over time. Um, and really, I think, you know, we're going to have to wait uh, additionally, you know, even this year, the ACTs and the SATs, many colleges and universities eliminated their requirement for fall of 2021 for admission. They waived those requirements. So we don't even have that data particularly from whole segments of your high school um, population to look at because so many kids didn't take them because they weren't required for admission this year. 
if they were graduating, they weren't required for fall of 2021, right? Juniors, seniors who would have taken them. Um, and so we don't even have a lot of that data from this past year because of that. So that kind of hard data, we're going to have to wait for next year. And we're going to have to depend on those classroom um, benchmarks assessments that were given in other district assessments that may have been given to measure student performance for this year. And all districts are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, and, you know, there are estimates of the financial cost um, of this educational gap that run into billions of dollars over the lifetime of these kids. So yes. um, it's a little scary, but that's probably why it's even more important than ever to really think about um, what we need to do to make sure that we are moving forward in a coherent fashion um, and leveraging what we've learned from the year, the year and a half that we have spent in this circumstance. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you. Safe. Yeah, no more questions or comments. I want to say again to you, thank you, Ms. Thorne. You're again, welcome. My really pleasure. Excited about this all. You know, as you pointed out a number of times, strategic plans are opportunities, obviously, for the district to learn about um, the needs of what the community is after, but also for the community to learn um, about the needs, unique needs of our district as well. As you pointed out, only 20% of the population um, might take advantage of the public school system. And so indeed, there's a large population out there that needs to know what's taking place. And we exactly. appreciate you coming back. We appreciate, again, you've been a, a, a loyal, uh, I don't want to say servant, but that's what you do. You serve us quite well. And I and we appreciate the, the efforts that you continue to, to, to put forth for us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It is always a pleasure to be in Plainfield. So thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. It's good to see you all. If I don't see you, have a wonderful, restful summer go nuts doing the fun things that you can do now that you haven't been able to do um and i hope to see you um if not this summer in the fall and take care stay well be well okay thank you Bye, all right guys. have a good night you thank you bye With that said it brings our special meeting to a close um I'd just like to join the meeting all those in favor Aye. Aye. Uh, and everyone have a very good night. Again, this will be posted for you guys to see it. Thank you. Thank you, public. And everyone.